If I get one to please stand, what you guys are doing, thank you. And turn into your blue song binders, song number 22. We're gonna sing They That Wait on the Lord. And this is a song we're gonna sing before Pastor Mark brings up the lesson, amen? Right. Amen. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like an eagle and soar. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. They that wait on the Lord. And I say, wait on the Lord. Hold on a little while longer. Here's what you gotta do. Trust and, Trust and believe, my friend. He's gonna work it out. He'll work it out for you. One thing you must remember. My God is able and he cares for you. Yes, he does. He cares for you. Whoa. Wait on the Lord. Hold on, hold on, don't give up, no, 
no, no. Don't give up. Listen, no, no, no. Don't give up. No, no, no. Wait on him. Wait on him. Don't give up. No, no, no. Don't give up. Listen, no, no, no. Don't give up. Listen, no, no, no. Wait on him. Wait on him. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. It's great to be here. Great to yes. be with the family. Thank our singers. I give them to God for the glory that I've seen and inspired us and moving us. Appreciate it. Appreciate them and I uh, appreciate what they do and uh, how they encourage us in every way. Uh, welcome some of you back. I know uh, uh, Tremaine and Brittany has inventory today uh, once a year. Costco have inventory, and that's the one time they cannot miss. They go all day on Sunday. I don't know why they choose Sunday to do inventory. Uh, but they, that's the day they choose once a year, so that's where they are. And, and uh, I know that I'm looking forward to them. They also moved over the weekend, so I'm very excited about them being much closer to us. And, uh, uh, and I, they're still doing a little bit of moving. We're doing moving a little stuff around, but I'm excited to have them close for the baby get here, uh, that I can reach out and touch. Yeah, I'm excited about that. And uh, spending time with them. Uh, I want to uh, pick up where I left off. The kingdom mindset. Amen. Part two. Amen. The kingdom mindset. And instead of where I'm trying to behave. Now I move around a lot. I mean, instead of where it's going to be. Uh, take help with us at the camera now. Amen. Yeah, amen. 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 And uh, I know Kiki's already asking about doing some greeting. I appreciate you sisters really stepping up and want to uh, uh, help and serve in every way. But uh, uh, Silhouette, I'm going to try to stay in the middle for you until I, until I break you in. And I break in, and you got to follow me, sister. You got you to you keep up with me now. Uh, but I'm looking, I appreciate you willing uh, to be to serve in that way. Amen. So Kingdom Mindset Part 2. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, as we do a little review, and then we're going to get right into Part 2. Amen. Come on, Mark. Matthew 6, verse 33. It simply says, But seek first the king, his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. A kingdom mindset seek first the kingdom of God. When we put God first, all other things fall into their proper places or jump out of our lives. Our love of the Lord shall govern our lives. That's the kingdom mindset. We must get rid of all our earthly mindset and gain a kingdom mindset and allow God to rule our hearts, minds, and soul. We must surrender to God and live out his agenda for our lives and not our own agenda. That's the kingdom mindset. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. Turn there with me. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. It simply says, For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. A kingdom mindset has the mind of Christ. God calls us to have this mindset. To think like his son who came down on this earth and died for our sins. To have that mindset. A kingdom mindset part two. Turn me to 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 3. As we now go into part two. I just want to give you a little review of what we've been talking about. So now turn with me to 1 Peter. Amen. Amen. 2 Peter. I'm sorry, I'm going to go to 2 Peter. Chapter 1, verse 3. That's good too. Yep. 2 Peter, chapter 1, and verse 3. Listen to this. As we now go into part 2, listen to these words. His divine power has given us everything we need for a good life, a godly life, through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. 
of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Amen. And you will receive a rich welcome into this eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we must do these things. We must say no to our own evil desires. We got to learn to say no. And don't give in to what we feel and, and what we think is right and what we know is evil. We must say no to it. And we must spiritually mature. And we got to add to our faith, brother and sister. We got to mature spiritually. We got to grow up. This got to be a year that we, you look in the mirror and say, I will be far along this year than I was last year. Yeah. It's kind of mature. We got to look in the mirror and say, I'm going to be the far along that I've ever been in my life spiritually. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you're supposed to look at it. Right. Yeah. You're supposed to mature and then take, you're supposed to take one step forward and two steps back. Yeah. We got to be moving forward in our walk with God. Being spiritually mature. Yes. If we do these things, we'll never stumble. Yes. A kingdom mindset has been heavenly minded. Mm. Amen. Amen. Amen, Eternity focused. Yes. And spiritually mature. Yes. Hear those words. A kingdom mindset is heavenly minded. Yes. Eternity focused. And spiritually mature. We got to grow up in these areas. Yes, sir. Having our minds on spiritual things with holy desires. That's a kingdom mindset. We've got to and we must gain these convictions. Some of us got to be further along. We can't still be kicking the can on things. We've been Christians. Some of you have been Christians six months. Well, you should be, you should be further along spiritually. You should be struggling with the same thing spiritually. That's what God's talking about. We got to grow. There's, some of you got to say, okay, I used to read my Bible three or four times a week. Now I read it every day. Amen. That's spiritual maturity. Amen. I used to pray my wife every now and then. Now it's every day. Amen. That's spiritual maturity. Amen. I used to be late to church out every other week, but now I'm never late. Amen. That's spiritual maturity. Amen. I used to sleep in on Sunday school, but now I never miss. That's spiritual maturity. Amen. We got to grow up. That's right. 
You cannot get your hands held all the time or you won't make it. And you can only be on time for what you call the fun things. When it's time to go to somebody's house to eat. Time to go catch a movie. We're on time for those things. We've got to spiritually mature. It's time for us to initiate praying with us. Instead of others always initiate praying with us. It's time to spiritually mature. It's, it's important that we start asking people how they're doing spiritually. Instead of people always asking you how you're doing spiritually. It's time to grow up. This has got to be a different year for you. That you make God a priority. Instead of what you feel and what you think. Spiritually mature. Heavenly minded. Eternity focus. And spiritually mature. Having our minds on spiritual things with holy desires. This must describe us, brothers and sisters. This must describe you. We must, must not allow Satan to define us. Amen. You got to hear that. Come on. Don't let your evil desires define you. Do not give in to that way of life. This is a new year. What kind of goals have you made? Do your goals glorify God? Are they kingdom mindset goals or are your goals all about you? And what you want. And how you want to get there. And how you going to do it. We must ask God to give us a kingdom mindset. And not a selfish mindset. Let's ask God to help us in this. Ask God to help set your goals. That will glorify him than you. That will lift him up instead of lifting you. It should be said when you reach one of your goals that man to God be the glory. Amen. Now look what I have done. Check me out. Break it down, bro. Break it down. We gotta get out of that mindset and wait on people to stroke us and tell us how awesome and incredible we are. And just focus on giving God glory, and it doesn't matter what other things. As long as God is glorified. Yeah. And all the angels yeah. are saying praise my yeah. Lord. We got to ask God to help our hearts with this. Yeah. So it's not worldly minded. Yeah. A kingdom mindset is heavenly minded. Yeah. Yes. Turn with me to Colossians chapter 3. Okay. All right. Yeah. It's been heavy on my heart to get us on this path. With a few or many, it doesn't matter. Right. God can use whoever decides to have a kingdom mindset. Right. It's too many times everything we do in life is about what we want instead of what God wants. Right. And yet the Bible does not teach that. Right. Where we go to school, where we work, is always about us. Right. Instead of what's best for the kingdom of God. Yeah. Right. That's how God is glorified. Yeah. And everything we do, it should be that. we got to get out of this mindset. Yeah. Amen. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated. At the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Amen. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Amen. We got to set our minds on heavenly things. Yes. Yes. And get out of this earthly way of thinking. Right. And not let Satan take us down the wrong path. Right. Worldly thinking is not a kingdom mindset. My question to us is, how do we do this? Gain a kingdom mindset. Well, we got to ask God to give us a new heart. Yeah. We got to ask God to give us a heart for him. Yes. You want to see God do great things in your life? Surrender. Amen. Truly surrender from the heart. 
And he will turn your life upside down. Because that's what he did for me. If he do it for me, he'll do it for you. He will change you forever. But you've got to keep surrendering. Because there's many times I go, oh, Lord, why me? And I repent. Because God says, yes, you. You will not be glorified, but I will. Many will not know you, but I know you. That is all that matters. Just speak to my people. So why are you not in Texas Stadium anymore? Standing for 10,000. Is that to glorify you or me? You got to be willing to give God all you got when it's a few or many. It doesn't matter. Only God matters. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We must gain and ask God to give us this mindset, this heart. How do we get it? Look at Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways, in the life you once lived. But now you must also rid yourself of all such things as these, anger, rage, Malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other. Since you have taken off the old self with its practice and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in your knowledge and the image of its creator. My God, my God. We got to put to death our earthly nature to gain a kingdom mindset. And we got to. Gain these convictions. Yeah. I've seen some of my best friends in the world lose this conviction. I've seen them go in with the kingdom mindset and, be, and years go by, Satan beat them up and they lose the kingdom mindset and yet they still preaching for the Pope. And they do not have the kingdom mindset. No, sir. This is about the money they make, the business they got and take their retirement. Preach. So listen. It is time to repent. We got a world to save. And we must be the mindset. Hear me, church. Surrender. It's time to turn ourselves in. We got to be careful when we say. Then they kids lose their soul. Yeah. But they become bitter That's and angry. Right. And they don't trust anybody. Yeah. My best friends have that one on their body. Yeah. Come on. Talk about it. So you got to be careful what you say in your household. Yeah. Do not gossip in your household. Yeah. Do not slander in your household. Yeah. Talk about Hallelujah. Help us out. Or you can lose your household. Yeah. And you yeah. must gain yeah. conviction. Yeah. That is not the kingdom mindset. The time is now. We want God to be glorified. And so we got to swallow our pride. Humble up. When things don't seem right, trust God. When times get hard, trust God. When there's nothing in a bank, trust God. When it seems like the marriage is on the brink, trust God. When it seems like your kids are losing their mind, trust God.
seriously. A man, he don't know what's wrong with his kids. I do. You messed them up. That's right. And you got to hold up to it. That's right. Talk about it. And that's not every rebound. Amen. Because all of your garbage, you put on them. Have you lost your mind? Your heart's got hard. Well, man, Mr. Murray, let me tell you what the, what, what the church did to me. The church didn't do anything. People did. And they're not perfect. So forgive them. And move forward. We must gain this kingdom mindset. People use excuses of what people do to them and put it on God. Are you crazy? My God is perfect. Yes. He makes no mistakes. Yes. He is love, kind, patient, and he will rebuke us. Yes. You do not want to meet God like that. Because the dreadful things are fall in the hand of the living God. We must gain a kingdom mindset. Hear me when I tell you. It's time to stop looking backwards. That's right, man. You got the key, you better hold on and move forward. Yeah. Do not look back. Yeah. Stop it. Right. There's nothing back right there that you've done is worth holding on to. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, you repented. Yes. Look at Luke 9 57. All right. All right, Mark. All right. All right. Come on now. Luke 9 57. There you go, brother. That's it. That's the one. I need a glass of water. As they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Come on. He said to another man, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go back and bury my father. Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first, let me go back. Where? Let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. Amen. Who said that? Jesus. Stop looking back. Yep. Right. Press forward. Amen. Heaven is the goal. Yes. That's a key to mindset. Yep. Is this hard? Yes, without God. Yep. But with God, everything is possible. How do I know this? Because Jesus tells me so. Mark chapter 10, on, verse 27. On, Jesus. Amen. Mark chapter 10. Verse 27. Jesus looked at them and said, Who looked at them? Jesus. I can't hear you, church. Jesus. With man, this is impossible. But not with God. All things are possible with God. Then Peter spoke up. We have left everything to follow you. See, can we say that? Can we say we left everything to follow him? Or are we still holding on to certain things in our hearts we ain't told nobody? Come on. Come on. Come on. Break it down, boy. Have we really left everything? Come on. Come on. Or you still have a hard time forgiving? Have we really left everything? Are you still lazy? How you really left everything. Uh, when tide come around, you already paid all your bills and bought what you want to bought and just put, put a little left, what you got a little bit left in your pocket into the pot. No, you haven't left everything doing that. Have you really left everything? Sometimes I wonder if you really was part of a church in your lifetime when you saw when they did special contributions and different things where the money really went. 
But you need to give God glory because here, when we give our, especially as everybody give by, by March 31st, we, you know where every dime is going. We've already spent money on the mic. Where's the mic? There it is right there. We already bought this. And that was a pretty pay. Now we got to give that back to Jamie. And what we collect still not quite enough, but I know my God is bigger than that. Churches, when they take a special contribution, it's really for the minister's wife's salary. Yeah. Yeah. So they can buy bigger cars and bigger houses. Yeah. That is not the kingdom of God. Right. That is not a kingdom mindset. Right. And yet, we're trying to make sure everything that we put it back into God's people and His church. Yeah. We're trying to save souls. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to be so Because anytime you have a question, come ask. Don't shut down. Don't be deceitful. Don't hide your giving. That's not a kingdom mindset. So I know every day I might give. Come on. Because he got to set the budget for the church. But does he know how you give when you hide it? Because you don't want nobody to know. That's not a kingdom mindset. It's our responsibility to pay our bills. And we're not paying it on false sound. It falls on me. And what have I taught in this church? We gotta be willing to have a kingdom mindset. It's something you don't understand. You ask questions, you don't hide and don't give. That's right. How can God bless you? Right. right you gotta have a kingdom mindset. Yes, yeah. I'm gonna tell you how I gave all my life. Come on. I didn't worry about what they did. I worried about what I was giving to God. Yeah. Thank God bless you. Amen. All my life. Yes. I never had to ask a minister, a deacon, an elder, nothing. I looked in the mirror and said, what am I doing? Yeah, that's right. Come on, and God blessed that. Yes, did. My giving was based on what they were doing. Amen. It was based on what God called me to do. Right. Yeah, that's, right. Yeah, that's, right. that's a kingdom mindset. Yeah, that's right. He said, well, preacher, are you talking about anybody particularly? I'm talking to all of us, yeah. including me, yeah. to have a kingdom mindset. Yeah. we got to get back to be sold out for Christ. Amen. I think we've been shrinking back and half-hearted too long. Because Jesus wants to reward our hearts. Look at verse 28 of Mark chapter 10. Truly I tell you, Jesus replied, no one who's left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me in the gospel would fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields along with persecution. In the age to come, eternal life. Amen. But many who are first will be last and last shall be first. Amen. God says, man, I want to open the floodgates of heaven for you. Right. But you've got to have a kingdom mindset. That's right. Yes. Right. A heart sold out for God. Yes. We've got to stop having a heart half-hearted mindset. Amen. Halfway in and halfway out. Is this too hard? Yes, without God. But you got to remember, we got God. That's right. Thank you, Father. We got to gain these convictions. Amen. Let it not be said to us what was said to them in John. Chapter 6, verse 6. They turn there. Because maybe we might need to be told this. Come on. Amen. Mm. Hey, hey. Hey, man, boy. You going now? Hey, man. Maybe I need to say this to you the way Jesus said to them. That's right. Because it's in the Bible. That's right. John chapter 6, verse 60. Mm -hmm. On hearing it, me and his disciples said, This is a hard teaching. <laughs> Who can accept it? Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this. Who was grumbling? Disciples. His disciples. Yeah. Jesus said to them, does this offend you? You offended by what I'm saying? So is this a hard teaching? You offended? Then Jesus go on and says this. Then what if you 
see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before. The Spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the Spirit and life. Yet there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray them. Betray him. He went on to say, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled them. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. And then Jesus said this to him. You do not want to leave too, do you? See, you can say, wait a minute, preacher, you're on the lost show why? That's why many people don't follow you anyway. All right. Very few follow Jesus. I'm all right. Very few. Except that. See, yeah. Marty Wood challenged me one time. He said, Marty, now, you know you can, you can get out there and motivate people and make them happy. But are you going to be speaking the truth to them? Because it's not about being going to church and being happy. It's about going to church and make sure you make it to hell. So you can go fill up the state and I see you do it. But is everybody going to make it to hell? So you will be tempted to, when people struggle and get mad, see, are you going to stroke them or tell them the truth? When they threaten to quit and leave, are you going to open the door for them or are you going to try to hold them back? You got to let people make their own decisions. Because why will you have a house full of people and 99.9% .9 of them going to hell? That's right. Of what you have taught them and what you allow them to do in the church. Brothers and sisters, that is not going to be us. No, sir. No, sir. We will not allow adultery to go around men right. and women sleep with each other in church. Right. That's ungodly. It will not be allowed. Right. We're not allowed people singing in the choir and they sleeping around. Right. We're not allowed people singing in the choir and they are lesbians or they gay. Right. And it's okay if they give their tithes. No, it's not. We're not going to allow people to live in deceit purposely. We're going to hold people to the word of God. Amen. And we get, we marry you off, those who get married, I want to stand there proudly and be able to say, these men and women are holy. Amen. They ain't been sleeping around as they engaged. I'm not going to call the church out, but the church with over 10,000 members, members called me and asked me to do the marriage council. I said, why? You got a preacher. Well, no, you know, I ain't, he ain't got time. Okay, I have mercy. But if we're going if I'm doing your marriage counseling, then we're gonna talk about. I want to be clear in my conscience what you're doing. Now, when we living together, oh, you're living together. You sleeping together? Well, yeah. Well, we've been living together for a couple of years. We ain't slept together all week. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, this is what I do. Because I'm willing to help. Amen. As of the day, until we finish back, all I'm going to ask you is simply this. My wife and I do not sleep together anymore. Oh, that's no problem. Oh, no, I'm not done. Amen. Okay. Now I'm going to ask you to move out. Amen. Let me read something to you. The Bible says, should not be a hint of immorality. Amen. You can't be living together and taking a shower together when you ain't sleeping together and taking a shower So let me know if we can finish up our counseling. Three months later, I heard back say they're going to use somebody else. But that's the world. But is that you also? Those will tell you what you want to hear, you are right. But when I start challenging your heart, have a heart of kingdom mindset, you rub the wrong way. See, you might not outwardly say anything, but inwardly, in your heart, you can be saying everything. So you got to search your hearts, brothers and sisters. That's right. That's right. And do not allow your heart to be ugly. Because right. you can sit here and look pretty and smile and handsome 
and going to hell because your heart's not right. Let's get our hearts right. Don't worry about the outward appearance. Get your heart right. So that we can go to heaven together. That is eternally focused. We must gain these convictions. Having a heart for God with obedience to his words is a kingdom mindset. And not everybody's willing to accept this. Only a few. The question is, are we one of the few? Because we obey him, we surrender to him and his will for our lives. We have been born again, baptized disciples. And we have the kingdom mindset. Because we're really willing to surrender. Trust him. And give him our all. Yes. The focus is Jesus. Yes. It's not me. Yes. It's not the need. It's not us. Right. It is Jesus. Yes. Yes. So we got to ask God. To help us. Gain this heart. Yes. And gain these convictions. And to God be the glory. Be the Amen. glory. Amen. 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 God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. I'm going to ask if any way we can get on our knees so we can pray. Yes. Tim, if you come up and pray for us. Yes. Pray for our hearts. If we got a dress on, it's okay yes. to stay seated. Pray for our hearts. Yes. Pray for our spirit. Yes. Pray for our minds. Yes. That we will gain and have yes. a kingdom mindset. Yes, Lord. That we won't trust Satan. We'll trust God. Yes, Lord. That we won't give in to all yes. this world and evil desires. Yes. We'll yes. know that God is with us. Yes. Amen. I'm going to get on my knees. Okay. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Sorry, I'm give you a minute. Father, we come before you uh, just grateful and thankful for the message, God, just uh, begging for our hearts, God, begging you to change our hearts, to help us, God, to have a kingdom mindset, to take in what was said, God, and apply it to our lives, not let us let it fall on deaf ears, God. I pray that we do what you tell us to do, God, that we're motivated by the cross, that we're motivated by your love, Father, that we don't look back. Help us not to look back at the past, God, but uh, only look forward, God, in the yes. direction you have us. Help us to see ourselves the way you see us, God, yes. to see us as uh, godly men and women, God, that want to serve you. And with you, this is possible, but without you, God, it's, it's impossible. Yes. Help us to see our dependency and our need for you, God, that we read our Bibles every day, that we pray to you, that we ask you, God, to... Uh, to change us and to mold us and to shape us into who you call us to be, God. Thank you so much for this message, God. I pray that uh, we continue to keep it on our hearts, that it burns our hearts until we change to be who you call us to be, God, that we're not going to be the same people, that we're not going to be like this world, God. Help us to hate this world and to love you, God. We can't have both, Lord. Help us to have an eternal uh, focus God, and to, be, uh, to have that kingdom mindset that you call us to have. God, thank you so much for this message. God, we love you. We praise you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The next song we're going to sing is song number seven in your blue song binder. Song number seven. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out 
your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining. Shining in the light of your glory. Oh, pour out your power. Pour out your power and love. As we sing holy, holy, holy To see you high lifted up Shining Shining in the light of your glory Oh, pour out your power Pour out your power and love As we sing holy, holy, holy Holy, holy, holy Father, you're holy, holy, holy. When Jesus shows, holy, holy, holy. I want to see you, Lord. You're holy, holy, holy. The Spirit, you're holy, holy, holy. So, Father, you're holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. God, you're holy, 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 spiritual, holy, 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 say Jesus, you're holy, 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 I want to see you, everybody lift your hand, Lord, you're holy, 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 say Jesus, you're holy, 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 Lord, we love you, holy, holy, Jesus, you're holy, 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 and for the Spirit, you're holy, holy, holy. I want to see you, said God, you're holy, holy, holy. Jesus, you're holy, holy, holy. Spirit, you're holy, holy, holy. I want to see. Amen.